All right, welcome to the Dayton Metro Arts Club. Okay. I am Dwayne Daniel, and this is your fourth section. This time, the subject is going to be, the subject is going to be Kiroskiro, building images by way of Kiroskiro, and we are also going to touch on um, some of the golden proportions. We're talking about balancing compositions. Okay, the importance when it comes to, to dealing with compositions. I have provided some packets of information that begins to talk about some of the natural things that happen in, um, as far as composition is concerned. Okay? Natural order. Design always imitates nature and what we are dealing with here is design as it um, deals with the way that we see and experience the world around us. There has always been spirals that are very, very natural when it comes to when it comes to dealing with nature. When it we have hurricanes that spin off of the equator as far as the world is concerned. And they always have a tendency to spin counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. Okay. Again, we're dealing with that golden, with that spiral at a relatively large scale. When we pay attention to, if you've ever paid attention to, to the structure of galaxies in space, their relationship is always spirals. Water going down drains in the northern hemisphere is always going to go down the drain counterclockwise. Southern hemisphere below the equator, it's going to be clockwise, okay? Hurricanes also spin in those particular directions, but I'm only saying that to get to the point that that spiral happens in micro and macro, meaning extremely small and extremely large. And we can see it in the design or structure of the trunks of elephants, the tails of, um, of many, lizards we see that everywhere but some of the some of the earlier artists began to use that to help to balance out some of their compositions as well now i don't have it right in front of me but what we have here is we have a relationship of one one point six one eight okay, to one that's the relationship of this particular shape that would be the height width relationship of that particular shape now what we are doing if we're talking about the spiral that's created now we're talking we have squares that will spin off and create those spirals. Shape begins to come from. As far as how human beings use it, and as far as it's being used to represent a balanced composition. Basically, I'm dividing this page into the idea, I may not be doing that from what you can see, but dividing this into thirds. And most compositions, balanced compositions, are going to have the height of their intensity okay? or the strongest contrast or really drawing the viewer's attention to this area, this area, this area, or this area. That's what that 
that's how the golden spiral is actually presented. Okay. It comes to that particular situation. Now, that is a formula that can be used to have composition to, with stagnation, to keep them from being stagnant, to make them a bit more natural and easy on the eye for the viewer. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the vine charcoal and just placing it on the page. And now I am taking some of the compressed charcoal and putting a little bit of it on top of it. The thing that I'm doing now is I'm creating the atmosphere of this particular environment in this little area. Next, I'm going to balance this composition out. However, whatever I think is going to work for it, I may want this object to be, and I'm making decisions about this as I go. So it's no, nothing is defined, it's flexible. It's the thing to remember when it comes to this, this is flexible. We have choices. Structuring this object, I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. Depends on what we want to do with it. Think about establishing the atmosphere first, initially, is that most of the image is already created. It's already done for you. Shapes of the shadows. Again, mashing the charcoal down into the pores of the paper, creating the shapes of the shadow for the most part. As far as the light object, I really don't have to do much drawing as far as anything else. I'm simply pulling the light out. It's almost the equivalent to adding a lighter value of paint. If it's not out far enough, and if it's out too far, bring it in. Squinting my eyes and looking for the extreme lights that are being reflected. They won't have equal power and that allows the object to begin to form. Most of the things that I'm doing right now, I am doing 
making decisions from a squinted eye. thing that I want you to pay attention to when it comes to this particular what I'm doing right now is I pop some of the lights out okay I am squinting my eyes and looking for contrast which is the difference between light and dark and right now the strongest difference between light and dark is happening probably in this area that's one of the strongest contrasts so what I'm going to do is make sure that I pop that out. I do whatever I need to do in order to pop that out. Okay. This happens to be a very strong contrast area. I can pop that out. Putting most of my concentration this time on the contrast and juggling the contrast is the difference between light and dark. Okay. Some places it's going to be stronger than others and we have to be aware of that. That's what's going to allow these compositions or should I say allow the illusion of whatever it is that you're dealing with to be communicated to your viewer. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about, the, 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 the readability of it, okay? <clears throat> How well are your objects communicating? And what we're doing today is simply providing some very basic things to think about when it comes to communicating your ideas or concepts. Contrast again. Contrast between here and here is nowhere near the strength of the contrast between here and here. Contrast between here and here is very, very subtle. So all I'm doing at this particular point is making sure that I am aware, at least aware of that. Remember our concentration is on why we are seeing it. And it's simply a collection of contrasts. Contrast being the difference between light and dark. Okay. Anytime we are dealing with a medium such as charcoal, okay, 
making broad and general decisions as we have throughout this particular sessions, the four sessions. Everything that we've talked about so far all involves decision making that a painter would have to make. So even though you're using charcoal, these are painterly decisions that we are dealing with, okay? Thank you. And this concludes the drawing section of the Dayton Metro Library Art Club. Dwayne Daniel out, thank you.